What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about possibly the steal of undrafted free agency. So let's get it started. Yes, y'all, I'm not even kidding. This may be the steal of undrafted free agency. The Detroit Lions signed Hunter Bryant out of undrafted free agency, well, right right after the draft. Now, this wasn't necessarily a need, right? Tight end was not a need in the draft, so Detroit Lions decided that they weren't going to participate in selecting one. Some people wanted to see a guy like Thaddeus Moss at the end of the round because, you know, he's Randy Moss's son and stuff like that. But the Lions said, nope, they opted not to take a tight end, and it didn't look like we were going to bring one in, which I'm completely fine with, right? You got Isaac Nauta, you got TJ Hawkinson, you know, you got Jesse James. What's the need? to bring in another tight end well when one falls to undrafted free agency that is this good you might as well bring him in this is probably a guy that the Packers should have brought in and maybe would have made Aaron Rodgers a little bit happy I don't know I don't know how he's feeling I don't know how he's feeling after that Jordan Love move but anyways let's not touch on that the Detroit Lions brought in Hunter Bryant and I'm not gonna lie to you I didn't follow tight ends heavy um, but as I look into more of these tight ends and as I look into Hunter Bryant specifically I understand why there's hype around the Lions signing this guy as an undrafted free agent. It may not be the biggest need, but man, was this an absolute steal. How did this guy become, a, become an undrafted free agent? Like what? Patriots, you trade up for a guy named Ossie Ossie when you could have selected Hunter Bryant. Now I understand the big reason. I know why he fell. It was injury concerns. He had knee injuries that limited to just over 900 snaps of play, only one year as a starter. In 2018, he only played in five games. In 2017, he only played in nine games. And uh, yeah, the injuries were really the concern. And it's very big concerns when it just keeps happening. But in 2019, when he was actually healthy, he showed us that he was one of the top tight ends, if not the top tight end in the draft. Let me just say PFF says he's the best tight end in this draft class. So I let me just, and we got him as an undrafted free agent. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. Bears took one at 43. Anyways, let's talk about this. I'm sorry. I have to dig at these NFC North teams because it's just too good. It's too good. Um, but this is a guy that to me doesn't even look like much of a tight end at all. Um, the first time I watched him, I was like, hold up. That's a tight end. Like he's lining up as a tight end. But this dude don't look like a tight end. He looks like a wide receiver that's kind of like uncoordinated. <laughs> like, I'm just going to be honest with you here. But he's very, very good when you watch him. I mean, he looks like a wide receiver. He's 6'2", 248. And obviously, there's some guys at that size that can play tight end. Delaney Walker, for perfect example, is 6'1", 240 pounds. And he's one of the best blocking tight ends. So I know some people say, well, he can't block. Yeah, even like Delaney Walker could as well. Um, and he was, you know, even smaller than Hunter Bryan is. And I'm not saying he's going to be a great blocker. I'm, I just thought I'd point that out. But man, this dude looks like a wide receiver, right? He's six foot two, and uh, he has the agility once he catches the football after making the grab to make plays after catching the football, right? His yards after reception, his ability to make people miss. He had 18 broken tackles on 85 receptions. That's that's not normal. Is that normal? Like, come on, man. This dude, is he's, he's got it all there. He ran a 4.74 40-yard dash time, which isn't anything that's going to blow you away. But again, he was a tight end. A 32.5 vertical inch uh, jump, 23 bench press reps. Now, again, again, this is probably not going to be a great red zone threat. This isn't someone like Jesse James who they're going to go to in the back of the end zone. But this is a guy that can actually add depth at that wide receiver position and the tight end spot. This is a guy that I think Daryl Bevel could use in multiple ways. And I don't know how they're going to use him, right? Because tight end use usage hasn't been very very much right I mean we saw Daryl Bevel for the first time last season and we thought that you know they drafted TJ Jackson number eight with the with the uh, 12 personnel that this was going to be something that we saw a lot and I felt like we saw it a lot but I thought a lot of times you know the tight ends were just blocking and we didn't really get to see what they could be right how great this tight end these tight ends could be and now we brought in a guy in Hunter Bryant who again I will remind you was listed as the number one tight end in this draft class by PFF all right, that's absolutely incredible to me. He's also the best route runner when it comes to being tight ends. He's also the best after the catch, but he has that ability to also be a wide receiver. I really don't know how they land this guy, but I'm really curious to see how they use him because they're deep at defense at tight end. He may not even make the team. Let's be real here. Sometimes they don't make the team, you know. But let, but I mean, I, I really. I don't know how we landed this guy, but I'm really curious to see what Daryl Bevel does. I feel like Daryl Bevel's a very smart offense coordinator. We saw him do a lot of trick plays last season, and we may see that again. Maybe Hunter Bryant will get involved. I'm excited, y'all. This was an absolute steal. Don't know how we got him as an undrafted free agent. Bob Quinn, not only did you kill the draft, you also killed undrafted free agency. Wow. I'll see you guys next time. Later will be the DeAndre Swift video. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.